Hi, this is Claude, and in this video, I want to tell you the fast and the slow cardiac action potential. So a ventricular action potential looks like this, and the atrial action potential looks like this. And there's another one, which is the action potential of your SA node cells. They look like this. I'm trying to match the y-axis here. So here is negative 70 millivolt that applies to all of these. These two are considered to be fast and this one is the slow one because the V and then the A action potentials can both activate pretty fast, but for the SA, it's a little bit slow. Let's talk about differences of this shoulder versus this small shoulder. Sodium channel activates, gives you this big jump and then voltage gated calcium channel also activates and starts to help you with the jump. Now, you have more BCAC in V cells, but less in the A cells. Voltage gated calcium channels are also slow to close. So more you have, more you have to wait for them to stop working. So you have more positivity that goes longer here. And here you have less positivity that's also shorter. So that's one cause of this longer shoulder in the V cells. The next cause is the potassium delayed rectifiers. They are the potassium channels that open up as the action potential progresses. They open up for the V around here and do the job and they stop working, bringing down the membrane potential to be more negative because case membrane potential is negative 90, I think six millivolt. So by opening the channels here, the membrane potential will go towards that case. Now for the A cells, they start not around here, they kick in a little bit earlier. So they will finish their work sooner because they kicked in earlier. So because of these two influences, one, having more voltage gated calcium channel that opens, so you have to wait for them to close, and two, having a little bit later uh, starting of this delayed rectification, you'll have a longer shoulder in V compared to in A. Now let's talk about the difference between the uh, slow and fast. It's slow because this increase doesn't get to use voltage-gated sodium channels. This is how a voltage-gated sodium channel looks like. It has this M gate and then the H gate. And if we graph the M gate and H gate, X axis is the voltage, here negative 60 millivolt. This is very positive, very negative. And Y axis is the openness. This is one, all the gates open. This is zero, nothing's open. Then for M, at low membrane potential, it's closed and now mostly closed and starts to open and fully open when you increase the voltage of this cell. But for the H, it's opposite. So it starts open, but as the voltage increases, H starts to close. So that's one difference. The second difference is that M is much faster than H to change its open closed state. So M can go from closed to open, open to closed pretty fast. On the other hand, H is slow to close and also slow to open. And this matters because an average cell's memory potential is negative 70. So it's around here, negative 70. But suppose something happened to your physiological condition and your resting memory potential is now higher, like negative 50 millivolt, then M is here, H is here, compared to M is here, H is here. Now let's draw out the cartoon. In this average case, you have closed M, open H. In this hyperkalemic or shifted state, you have open M, closed H. This is inactivated because when you get that hit here, hit here, and hit here, for these two, this is going to be ready for you to get out of the way and boom, let the NA come in. But this, at this higher resting potential, is closed by H, so it's gonna take time to open or might not even be able to open because it's too slow. So in the slow action potential of SA node cells, you cannot count on the voltage gated sodium channels to do the job. They exist, but they're inactivated. So here you're solely relying on the voltage gated calcium channel as we saw here to do the job. So the slope is a little bit slower. And this is why this is the slow action potential. Now let's think about why the shift in the resting potential happens. Well, what is maintaining this resting potential? Well, that's the K1 cells. And these are potassium channels activated by not voltage, but things like PI, P2, and other uh, cellular signalings. And this is similar to the sodium potassium ATPase, at least in my head, because 
this protein is faithfully working all the time to maintain the uh, concentration difference of sodium and potassium across uh, many, many cell types. K1 is doing similar work. It's actively uh, taking in potassium into the cell to make sure that inside is high and outside is low. By maintaining this uh, inequality of concentration, you maintain the uh, action potential of pure K. Action potential of pure K is around here, and by being permeable at rest, you are influencing the cell's memory potential to reach that of the case. Now, for the SA node cells with a slow action potential, they actually don't have K1s. And because they don't have K1s, they don't get to be at negative 70 at rest. And also there's another influence of not having K1, which is this. Look at this dropping phase. This is the phase three. Here you have phase three. Here you have phase three. So here you have the rectifying force two. But you see how rectifying force is maximum around here and drops a lot, but then rectifying force starts to decrease. And now that decrease is gonna to lead to this little increase of the overall cell membrane potential because less negative, more positive. The same thing happens here too, but they don't show up in the action potential figure because again, K1 is dominant in setting this resting memory potential at negative 70. So it overrides a lot of other signals. But here you don't have K1. So this signal of the delayed rectifiers will show up. And there's another reason why this goes up a little bit, just like this one, is because there is a current called IF. F stands for funny. Many ions get to move in and out and overall results in this slow increase of the action potential towards the positive. And this could be due to, again, not having enough enforcement of the resting potential. These minor signals get to influence the cells uh, overall membrane potential a lot. To compute this, what you're doing is summing up all of the memory potential of ions, multiply their permeability. When you had K1, permeability or K was dominant in setting this cell's memory potential. But if you don't have that term anymore, it's zero, then other ions will start to show their influence. This is maybe why the three signal shows up here. So in summary, Fast is fast because it has this ready voltage gated sodium channel. Slow is slow because it doesn't have IK. Without IK, most of this ready good voltage gated sodium channel is going to be in this inactivated state. They have these channels, but they're inactivated. So they only rely on the voltage gated calcium channel for this increase. And again, it's slow. Not having the K1 leads to other signals to be more obvious. That's this funny signal and also this three going down, which results cell memory potential going up. Oh, I forgot to tell you the most important part. So for this SA node cells, the action potential gets to repeat and repeat and repeat. And this is because as some of the voltage gated cation channels start to uh, recover, like the calcium one and others, the remaining positivity is going to be enough to kickstart the next action potential. And this is because see how the resting memory potential is pretty positive. It's almost like you stimulated this cell to be positive, right? They activate themselves, cycle will continue and continue and continue. This leads to your heart beating perpetually.